Hallelujah, hallelujah. Will you please stand to your feet and give God some praise on this morning? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the ninth month. This is the birthing month, not only naturally, but spiritually. And I know that we all have some things that we are looking for God to birth out on this month. I welcome you to Restoration Free Gospel Church of Christ here in Lexington Park, Maryland, under the leadership of Bishop John Briscoe, First Lady Briscoe. I give honor to Elder Russell Slade and his beautiful wife, Minister Latasha Slade, to all of the ministerial staff, the deacons and their wives, and to the entire whole house of faith and those that are watching via social media. We welcome you into this place on today. Hallelujah. And we're going to go to the throne in grace this morning. So, Father God, we thank you this morning, God, for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up not only with our eyes open, but in our entire right mind. And, God, we come before you this morning, God, and we ask God for repentance. Anything that we've done in thought, word, or deed, God, we ask you to forgive us right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you for this beautiful day, God. We thank you for the roofs over our heads. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for the vehicles and the transportation that we have, because some don't have those. God, we will never take you for granted. Even the little things, we say thank you, God. We thank you for saving our families, God. Even those that are unsaved, we are claiming their salvation right now in the name of Jesus, God. And God, we welcome you into this service on this morning. We ask that you bless everyone that is here, everyone that will watch the replay. We ask that you bless the, whoever will bring forth the word on today, the bishop. We ask that you bless JWM. And God, we ask that whoever is watching that is not saved, that they reach out and say, what must I do? to be saved. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. And we call it done. Amen. The scripture for this morning will be coming from the book of Psalm verse 5 chapter I'm sorry, chapter 5 verse 12. And it reads, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. And God, we thank you for your favor on this morning. And the word is blessed. And right now, I welcome JWM. And after them, the next voice that you will hear will be Bishop John Briscoe, who will bring forth the word on this morning. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come here this morning, amen. How many people come here this morning believe that your life, you are worth fighting for? Hallelujah. Come on, there's something about knowing that you are loved by God and you are worth fighting for, amen. Hallelujah, Lord, yes. Amen. You can wave your hands amen. to that, yes. amen. Hallelujah. And thank the Lord that he woke you up this morning because you are worth fighting for. Hallelujah. For well, some of us, he healed their bodies because we're yeah. worth fighting for. We're children and we sons and daughters of the Most High God. And believe me when I say you are worth fighting for. Amen. Push that button. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep it going. Just keep it going for a second. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just for a second, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We're at three yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
showed me You would never leave me there You claim because of what Made for so much more I am your child And I work fighting for So heavy By the weight of my mistakes You carry me And refuse to let me sink down the pressure you meant for me to soar I am your child and I work fighting for this I can Faith and not by sight, for victory. By the power of your mind, you straighten up my path. Open every door, I am your child. And I work fighting for this. No nothing, no nothing. And nothing can separate me from your love when there's so much more still worth fighting for. And that's why I'm pressed. It's worth it. For some more. So worth it. Cause the call of life Ooh, is worth fighting for. And I keep my mind. It's worth it.
this morning. Amen. We've been going through some storms and a lot of us have been beat down all week long and we come to encourage you this morning in the songs and the spirit. We just thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for everything. We thank God for you just being in our midst. Be encouraged this morning that the Lord has not forgotten all about you. You are not forsaken and you are never alone. God tells you that he'll never leave you nor will he forsake you. Amen. I'll be with you till the end. Don't last always. 
was just a test, a test of your faith. So stand strong, dry your weeping eyes. Joy comes in the morning, and everything is going to be, going to be all right. Yes, 
Bye-bye, so long Bye-bye You're not welcome here 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, come on, let's give the praise leaders a, a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah for leading us into praise this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bye-bye. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He encouraged us for the hour. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Trouble going to come, but bye-bye. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the awesome mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you, first of all, for you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and the shedding of his precious blood. We thank you for God for sending your son to the cross. Amen. Thank you, God. We thank you for conquering death, hell, and the grave, and then rising one day with all power in heaven and earth. And God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we say amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. Thank you, God. We thank God for each and every one of you that's joining us on social media this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say bye-bye to your troubles. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. What well, we don't understand that everything has a season. Amen. Everything comes with a season. I'm, I'm, I'm here now. What is this? The 18th, 18th day of September. You, you know, some people, Brother Ron, are scared of snow. But you don't have to be scared of snow in September. You don't have to be scared of snow in July. But, but you know, everything has to say. I, I went, to, went to a place a few weeks ago, and it was really, really hot. And everybody was claim, complaining about the heat when I got there. And I said, don't worry about it. December's coming. December's coming. It's, he's not going to stay always. Amen. Trouble don't come to stay always. Say bye-bye to it because it's going to run its course. It's going to run its course. Don't get upset. I, oh, my gosh. My wife and I were having the conversation yesterday. She was telling me about some friends and things that were going through some things. And, and I, had to, I said, baby, well, I, I, I look at things differently sometimes. People get upset about the process. You know, this and this and this. I said, what was the outcome? Look at the outcome of that process. Oh, you can get upset about this one, about this and about that and about this. But look at the outcome. And when I look at them, when they look at the outcome, baby, look what came out of that. The, 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 don't, don't worry about the process, because everything's got a process to it. When I make a cake, amen, they say, men are saying, when we make a cake, oh, we're going to break the eggs, they look a mess. Oh, we're going to throw the flour in there, it looks a mess. We're going to throw the sugar and the butter in there, it looks a mess. And, 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 and when it's all in the bowl, it looks like a mess. But once it gets beat up, Old folk used to say 300 strokes. That was before the days of the electric mixer. 300 strokes. And at the end, and you could tell, you could tell those ones that didn't do them 300 strokes. Couldn't you tell it? Because when you went to eat it, or oh, it was hard as a brick, it was heavy. Oh my gosh. Because somebody didn't put the time in 
to get it where it's supposed to be. Thank you, Jesus. But at the end of it all, after the 300 strokes, Brother Ron, after putting it in the oven for 350 degrees for a half hour, 45 minutes, and when you boil it out now and put it on the table, people didn't remember the raw eggs. They didn't remember the milk and the sugar. They didn't remember the, the lemon and the, and the vanilla. They didn't remember the flour. Now they're calling it not a mess, but a cake. They done absolutely changed this name <laughs> from a mess to a cake. And it's delicious. It's delicious. There's a process in life. And if you would just ride the process of life, oh, God knows. Oh, you can say bye-bye. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Life has a process to it. Don't get upset during the process. Thank you, Jesus. I remember years ago, God showed me. I can talk about me. God showed me two promotions on my job. And my wife wanted me to come up D.C. She said, babe, if you come up D.C., you'll get that quickly. But, but she knew, but God knew my body wasn't a commuter. They, they enjoyed getting up 3 o'clock in the morning, getting on the bus at 4.30, going to work, being at work before I get back up to go to Pax River. 6 o'clock, she's calling me. She's turning the lights on in the office. She wasn't, am I back up yet? Lord, have mercy. Getting home at dark. No, no, no. That, that was a process I wasn't willing to go through. God showed me two promotions. And he said, if you stay here, if you stay here. Now, look, look what he told me. The promotions came on the, on the benefits if I stay here. If I stay here. Now, it wasn't no guaranteed if I go to D.C. She's saying if I come to D.C., I get them. But the Lord done showed me here. And he done said, if you stay here, you'll get them. See, that, that, that's, that's going to mean a lot to some of you this morning. Because God's got benefits for you. The scripture says there's benefits in serving God. But if the devil can get you running, if the devil can get you to leave your post, mm -hmm, and then when your benefits don't come, you can't blame God. Because God promised me two promotions if I stayed there. And he sent a man, a man. See, because he says, give and it shall be given good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over that men given to your bosom. God sent a man. And he come to me myself and, and my co-partner co and said, look, I've been watching y'all. We didn't know the man had been watching us. See, you don't know that God is watching you. You don't realize that God is watching your faithfulness. You don't realize that God is watching all that you say and do. You got goodness and mercy walking behind you and writing. They writing. They writing. They writing everything you do and say. And, and, and God sent the man and said, I've been watching you and, and everything y'all do. And he said, I'm going to work to get you how many promotions? Now, he didn't know that God had showed me years earlier, two promotions. He starts taking my PD and start writing it up and rewriting it and to put it in to get two promotions. And he backed off. He said, no, I'm going to go for one and then after we get the one then I'm going to redo it for the two. For the second one. Well, he did it for the first one and we got it. And in the meantime, he got a promotion and left. Have you hope in somebody ever left? Ever left you? Somebody that lied to you and said, I'll never leave you. Huh? Somebody said, I'll be with you forever and left you. Woo! God knows. Has somebody ever left you and your hope was in them? And I got a, I got a friend on the job, Madison. I'm close to him, but he's in a position that I don't lack. And I would tell him, look. I think if you ever leave, they're going to they gonna want me to take your job. And I don't want your job. But you got to remember that God done showed you two promotions. 
He got upset one day. He got all these years in, 40-some years, and just, just told him, look, sign me up. I'm gone. Do what? The person that got the first promotion for me came back. Went to upper level, said, I think John would be good in that position. Do what? See, everybody that leave you is not. As long as they're in the land of the living, life is not over with yet. Don't count them out. They, 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 no, 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 you don't want to say goodbye. You don't want to burn bridges. Because you never know who God's going to use to bless you. He said, do good by all men, especially the household of faith. Amen. So this person comes back, goes to the front office and says, I think John would be great in that position. And he come and talk to me about it. And the very one that I didn't want to go because I didn't want his position has got my second promotion. And sometimes you hold on to things that God is trying to use to be a blessing to you. And you holding on to it. And when they walked out, he came back and said John would be great in that position. Now, John didn't want that position. But God. But God. See, Jeremiah 29, 11 said, God's got a plan. And he didn't tell me how he was going to work it out. He didn't go in detail. He just showed me the end results of both. He didn't tell me how he was going to get me there. Do the process. And in the process, the very person that I didn't want to leave me, left me. Mm. And God says, all right. He's holding up your position. He's holding up this, the other half of your position. Long story short, he left. I got the position that I didn't want. Man, now, hold on. There's a lot to this, but I can't tell it all. Remember I told you I didn't want his position? Didn't like what he did? Did not want it? Ain't go, ain't, as in better word, ain't going after it? It's a team. They come to me, the team does, and says, John, if you take the position, we'll do all the work. All we need you to be is a buffer between us and management. If you would be a buffer, you ain't got to do no work. All the contracts, he gave me an electrical engineer with contract experience. So the angel that did all the writing. Ain't got to do nothing to write. A electrical engineer that's smart as a whip. God will surround you with what you need. All you got to do is be there. Physical labor, men with muscles, exam, men with renown. We'll do all the work. John accepted position. God done told God I'll be out it in three years because I'm going to start the church. Got there, got comfortable until God come back and threatened me and said, Look, <laughs> I know you, I know you comfortable, but you gotta get up out of here. Cause I my my plan is that you're gonna be a pastor over church. And God knew I didn't want to be, but I had surrendered to the pool. I had surrendered to him and I told him, God, you let me retire and I'll do it. And I got the retirement age and mother, I'm comfortable. I'm rolling. Life is good. Life is good. But God had to remind me of my promise that God, if you allow me to get the retirement age, I'll come and do it. And that's when he threatened me, how much longer should I wait? And I said, all right, I'm out of here. I got to go, fellas. No matter how good. But the, the text this morning is trouble in the fellowship, but God. I looked up the word fellowship. And fellowship, the old preacher used to say fellas in a ship. But the dictionary says fellowship is a group of people that's in a posture and got all things common. Everybody's got the same mindset, the same goal. Amen? But see, the, the thing is, when God brings them into that ship, everybody's got a different idea how to do and what to do and how we're going to do it and when we're going to do it. But God's got us. So, so when you come into the ship, it's trouble 
in the fellowship. But as I told you on the first Sunday, forget that. Remember, but God. Remember there's an end coming. When Paul and Silas got beat, got their clothes tore off of them, the end result of all of that was that the jailer and his family got saved. Got saved. It was worth the Sunday suit. It was worth the whipping. It was worth, Peter said one time that we thank God that, it was, that we was worthy to be beat for the word of God. God knows that. Have you, have you come to that point yet? Have you come to that point yet that, it, that it's worthy to be beat for the word of God? The scripture said we have not suffered unto, no, unto blood. We haven't suffered unto blood. Oh, we want our way and everything. We want our timing and everything. But God's got a time. He's got a time. He's got a process. And, and, and y'all, 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 y'all sound good this morning. The praise team. Give the praise team another hand. I thank God for the ministerial staff. I thank God for the deacons and their wives. I thank God for the body of Christ. Thank God for the first lady. Amen. She, she said, I even got my shoe on today. I, I woke, when she woke up this morning, I said, do I need to get your medication? She said, no, I've already got it in my hand, taking it. You know, but God, man, it's a process of time. You're doing it on her own. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to the book of Acts this morning. We go, it's a lot here, but it talks about Paul's shipwreck. But, but the thing I want to look at, and you got to look at this, before we go to 27, nine, uh, Elder, there are some other things I want to touch on. But I, I need your mindset to think about this, this, this one thing. Because it comes down to a time trusting God in your storm. But God. You know you have, you have storms on the job. Mm-hmm. Some you have jo- uh, trouble, storms in your finance. Not enough. Sometimes, you know, you know we, we, we just take things for granted. Some of you done been through surgeries that the anesthesia done put you out. You don't know you coming out of that thing. You, you, you don't know that. You go for a simple colonoscopy and they put you under. You, you don't know that they, you're going to come out of that thing. So, so, but God, you know, there are storms that we go through. And I look at this. Some of you done been through divorces. But look at you now. Look how good you look. They, they walked out of your life and, and bid you farewell and what have you. But, but look, look at you now. But God. So some of you have been through relationships and going through relationships, and it's not what you wanted to be. But trust God. But God. Some of your children, we don't go and raise children, and God knows it and took us through everything. But God. But God. Some of you have got your marriages and you're in your marriages, but if it wasn't but God, you walk away from it. Lord, have mercy. But God. Some of you have gone to court and didn't know how you're going to make out. But God. Hallelujah. Some of you done had, un, some of you done, done, done had, what, well, let me see down here. Some of you done dealt with DUIs and DWIs and you don't know how that thing going to turn out. But God. But God. Some of you done been through untimely pregnancies and you wouldn't give the child back now if you had to. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't know how I was going to receive. You didn't know how to tell somebody you were pregnant. But God. See, I have to do this to bring everybody into their storm because sometimes you forget the storms you've been through. You, you, you don't go on to get something and your credit ain't, ain't right. But God. Some of your stuff done been repoed. But God. Some of you been evicted. But God. I just did some of these things to bring your mindset back that it was a time that you had to trust God. And if you trust him back then and you're here now looking good, smelling good, dressed all pretty, and God brought you through it, believe God that when you have trouble in the fellowship, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. Trust God. Let's go. Now, 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 Elder, before I get to the message, I want you to read Acts 42. I mean, 14. 14. 21 and 22. 
Because this is just laying the foundation for the message. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Back up on it. I'm sorry. Acts 27, 37. Acts 27, 37. Amen. That's going to be a part of our message, but I, I, I want to I show you the ending to now before we get to, before we get to here. Amen. Acts 27, 37, and it reads. And the Bible reads. Uh-huh. And we were in all uh -huh. in the ship, 200, three scores, and 17 souls. 16. Six, excuse me, 16. I'm sorry. 16 souls. So in this ship, in this fellowship is 276 people. Mm -hmm. Just want to let you know that in this fellowship is not just a little number, 276 peoples in this ship before Paul sails. Amen. Acts 27:43. Mm -hmm. But the centurion, uh -huh. willing to save Paul, uh -huh. kept them from their pr purpose uh -huh. and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea. Uh-huh. And get to land. Uh huh. Continue. Uh huh. And the rest, some on boards. Uh huh. And some on broken pieces uh -huh. of the ship. Uh huh. And so it came to pass uh -huh. that they escaped all safe to land. All 100, 276 people. I showed you the end of this story before we went through the story because there's a process to get here. But it said that all 276 souls were saved. But the 276 souls has got a storm to go through. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted you to see the end of the book. So that as we go through the process, you already know the end of the story. But there's a process to go through. See, Paul didn't know that when he went to that prayer meeting that they were going to get whipped that day. He didn't know that their suit was going to get tore up and beat up and, and tore up and what have you. He didn't know that they were going to have a midnight hour. But God knew. But God knew. And God, has, you got to understand that you do wrong when you say, I give my life to God. I give my life to Jesus. And whatever you say, God, I'll do. See, God has to remind us sometimes that we gave our life to him. Amen. That we don't belong to ourselves. So when you go to make decisions, you got to ask the one that you gave your life to, is this all right with you? Because remember, you gave your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Somebody, sometimes people give you things and they want to tell you how to use it. But did you give it to me? Is it mine? Well, if it's mine, then how are you going to tell me how to use it. I mean, you, you give me a gift for $20, and then you want to tell me who don't give it to. Uh, once it's mine, is it mine? Did you give it to me? All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go, let's go to the text. The text is trouble in the fellowship, but God... Acts 27 and verse 9. That's where we're going to start at. Let's go there and let's see what happens. Now, you already know the end of the story. Already know the end of the story. Come on, let's read now. Let's see what it's got to say. Now, when much time was spent. Paul, them that been on this ship, much time has been spent. Uh huh. And when sailing was now dangerous. Uh huh. Because the fast was now already past. Uh huh. Paul admonished them. Uh huh. And said unto them. Yes. Sir, uh -huh. I perceive that this voyage Whew. will be with hurt and much damage. See, see, God will take a person that's, that, that's got, that he will give vision to and that God speaks to uh -huh, and put him in the midst. And, and see, now you got to understand for those that got, saved, that, that got saved, there were three things for people to be saved. First of all, the captain of the ship, or the centurion, says that first of all, when the ship starts to break up, you that can do what? Swim, swim to safety. See, you that know prayer, pray. Whew. Mm, hallelujah. You that can fast, fast. Mm -hmm. The second part 
to get to safety. You that, he, he says, you that can swim, swim. You that can't swim, grab a what? Get a board. Because God had already said no souls will be lost. But there's a, there's, a way to get to, there's a way to get to shore. I'm giving you three ways to get to shore so that no souls will be lost. You that can swim, swim. You that can't swim, grab a board. And, and the third part, if you don't swim and can't grab a board, do what? Grab a piece of the ship. Grab a piece of the broken pieces. In other words, grab something in the Word of God and hold on to it. Hold, it'll get you to safety. It's 66 books here. Grab something and hold on to it. Because it will get you to safety if you just hold on. But they, they got ready to put the little ships down. And Paul told them, if you put the little ship, the lifeboats down, there's no safety in the lifeboats. He said, you got to stay in the ship. Until the ship is broken up, you got to stay in the ship. The storms will come in your life. And then I like this storm because this storm was a nor'easter and it said it only comes in the winter. Some storms comes in the winter. That's why I told you that in, in September 19, not here in Maryland, we, got, we don't have no snow. You might not lack snow, but, but we don't get it here in Maryland. When I was in Alaska, the snow started in September. But we, but as in Berlin, we ain't in Alaska. Now, those that lack Alaska and lack snow, guess where they are? They're in Alaska. Mm -hmm. They don't lack 100-degree days in humidity. That's what you got. Mm -hmm. They said we're going to get a few more 90s before it's over with. And, and those that's in Alaska don't want nothing to do with it. Read out. Look what it says now. And now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous uh -huh. because the fast was now already passed, uh -huh. Paul admonished them uh -huh. and said unto them, uh -huh. Sirs, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with, uh, with hurt uh -huh. and much damage, uh -huh. not only of the landing in ships, but also of our lives. Paul, then, then God then showed Paul that when you, when you sailed, you shouldn't have. But it's going to be with much hurt. It's going to be with damage. It's going to be lead and going to be ship, and you're in with our lives. But read 11. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the satyrian uh -huh. believed the master mm -hmm. and the owner of the ship uh -huh. more than those things which were spoken by Paul. See, now, right now, Paul's not the captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. See, right now, the one that's in charge is believing in those that's in charge. But see, one thing about God, God will speak to his people. And, and God will prove it through time that what he tells you is correct. Mm. Paul said it's not conducive to sail right now. But the centurion, which is over 100 men, because there's 276 people on that ship, 100 of them is soldiers. Mm -hmm. Then you got ship company. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you got prisoners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes up 276 souls. So they come on that ship with everybody having different positions, titles, and, 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 and dress codes and everything. Everybody's different. But the story ain't over yet. Amen. Read. Where are we going? Verse 14. Verse 14. But not, but not long after there arose against it. Not long after that arose against it. A temperate, a temperate wind, wind. Uh -huh. called a Eurocleton. Yeah, a, 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 a nor'easter. Now, a nor'easter is very close to being a hurricane. Now, you ride out a hurricane in your house, and you get fearful. Now, if you on a ship, and a, and a, and a nor'easter rise up, you know, and now, 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 one thing about being on that ship when a nor'easter rise up, we all in the same boat. I don't care what your position, I don't care what your title, I don't care how much money you got, I don't know how much prestige. I don't care what kind of home you got. I don't care what kind of car you're driving. When that nor'easter rise up and we all in that one ship, 
fellowship. Follows in a ship. It's not about positions and titles and money and what have you. When I, when I read about the Titanic, there were some wealthy people that died in that iceberg. There were some renowned people that never made it to shore. Amen. It wasn't about who you were at that time. Uh-huh. It wasn't about what you had at that time. Thank you, Jesus. God allowed to get to shore those that he planned to get to shore. And those that didn't make it, they didn't make it. Come on, let's see. But we already know the end of the story because he says that everyone would be saved. Mm. All 276. Come on, read. I'll look where we at. Verse 15. Uh-huh. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up unto the wind, uh -huh. we let her drop. In other words, we just took our hands off of it and let God do what he was going to do. And nothing else we can do. We done threw the tackle overboard. We done, we done put the sails down. It's doing its thing. Come on, read. And running under a certain island, uh -huh. which is called Claudia, uh -huh. we had much work to come by the boat. Mm, come on now. Which when they had taken up they use helps undergirding the ship. Uh -huh. And fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, mm -hmm. straight sails, mm -hmm. and so were driven. Helps, I found out, Brother Ron, was ropes that they brought under the ship to tie the ship together to help to keep the ship from breaking apart. Mm. I never known that. I looked it up years ago when I used to study this, that they would tie ropes that would bring it around the ship. I guess they had to go over the bow and walk it back and tie it so that the ship would stay together. Come, they, so they, they, they put helps on the ship. Uh-huh, read. And, and we being exceedingly tossed mm. with a tempest, Woo. tempest. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was it Paul that was tossed in the tempest? Maybe it was oh. the, just the centurion. Huh? Maybe it was just the ship company tossed in the temple. Maybe it was just the prisoners tossed in the temple. Shake it. I don't care if you're the cook on the ship, you in this tempest. I don't care if you're the steward on the ship, you in this tempest. I don't care if you're the centurion in charge of a hundred soldiers on this ship. I don't care if you're the owner on this ship. I don't care if you're the ship captain on the ship. It says that we all whew, was tossed in this thing. Come on now. Fellowship. Trouble in, trouble in the fellowship. Come on, read. And we be exceedingly tossed uh -huh. with the tempest. Uh -huh. The next day, mm -hmm. they lighten the ship. They lighten the ship. Through stuff out. Come on. And the third day. And the third day. We cast out with our own hands. Mm. The tackling of the ship. We threw out the oars. We threw out the life jackets. We threw out the, the meals. We threw, we threw out everything, everything that we could throw overboard to lighten the ship. Mm. See, because 276 souls has got to be saved. Mm. And we didn't throw over. Just imagine if you wanted to lighten the ship, throw Paul overboard. Throw the prisoners overboard. And they're already going to Rome. You can understand that road, that that Paul is on his way to Rome to be beheaded. And in this mess, and during this time that Paul is on his way to Rome, Paul is writing his testimony. I have fought a good fight. I, 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 I'm ready to give it up. When I looked at a movie with Paul and they walked him to the gallows, he didn't fight. He didn't struggle. He walked up to that guillotine and just laid his head down. God knows how many of us is willing to lay our head down for the struggle of Christ. Paul said, I fought a good fight. Mm. I paid the cost. Laid it down and just let him cut his head off. Lord have mercy. I mean, when you look at the, the apostles and how they died for the word of God, Christ was crucified straight up. Peter was crucified upside down. Said, I'm not worthy to be crucified as my master was crucified, as my Lord was crucified. Thank you. you read, brother. And the third day came. Uh -huh. We cast out with our own hands Come on, I the read. tackling of the ship. Uh -huh. And when neither sun nor stars mm. in many days appeared. Mm. Yes, sir. And no small tempest lay on us. 
all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. See, now, now, now look at that thing. It says it was 14 days somewhere else in that description. It says that they never saw sun nor moon nor stars for 14 days. You know, God will put you in a tempest and leave you there for a while. Ooh, until you realize it's him. He'll put you in there and just leave you there to work something out in your life. Lord, and look what he said, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appear, and no small temp, the, 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 the wind never died down. It didn't die down at night. It didn't die down at, in the evening. It didn't die down in the morning. It, didn't, it never died down. But God, but God, he said, no small tempest lay on us. I like that. All hope that we should be saved was taken away. All hope. Now, you know they got the sense of death on them now. Paul had Paul had been through this before when he said that trouble found us in Asia. And all hope that, 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 all hope that, that we would be out of the thing. But Paul had been there before. Read. But after long abstinence. I like that. Paul. But after long abstinence. Paul stood forth uh -huh. in the midst of them uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. Sir, wait a minute. Paul's neither the owner, nor the captain, nor the centurion. Paul is not in charge. Paul's a prisoner. Paul's the low life on the ship. If they need to lighten the ship, throw the prisoners overboard. They, they, Paul's on his way to die anyway. All of a sudden, God had elevated the low life. God has elevated you to a whole nother level. Do you not know that God will use people to elevate you? He will use trouble to elevate you. God knows that there's another part of this I got wrote down here, but I got to save it for Tuesday nights whenever I speak again. That, that he, will bring, he, he, will, he will cause trouble to come to elevate you. When that man retired, walked out, said, I'm out of here. Lord, trouble rose up in my life. Cause I, the thing that I, you got to be careful what you speak sometimes. And I done told him, I believe if you leave, they're going to want me to take that position. And Lord knows I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Brother, I don't want it. Even if it comes with a promotion, I don't want it. I don't want it. But God shook his tree and he left. And I told the man that came and asked me, I said, if anybody else would have asked me to take that position, I wouldn't accept it. But you, with you the one asking, is the only reason that I will accept it, because of you. But God had a purpose. God had a purpose. Read, Elder. But after long abstinence, uh -huh. Paul stood forth in the midst of them uh -huh. and said, Sirs, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me mm -hmm. and not have loose from Crete, mm -hmm. and to have gained this harm and loss. Mm -hmm. Read. And now I exhort you mm -hmm. to be of good cheer, Woo. for mm -hmm. there shall be no loss. Look at Paul. Look at Paul encouraging the people. I tell you right today, stay in the ship. Don't leave the ship. You might not want to be. You might not want to come. You might not want to do whatever God is asking you to do, but stay in the ship. If you can swim, swim. Amen. If, you, if you can't swim, grab a board. If you, if you don't grab a board, grab a piece of the ship. Mm, but hold on. I remember my pastor used to tell us years ago, if you're climbing a ladder mm -hmm. and, start to, and, start, and start, to, start to fall, hold on to the ladder. Hold on. You might slide back, but don't turn the ladder loose. Don't turn the pole loose. Don't turn it loose. Hold on to the pole. Thank you. Don't look good. Don't sound good. Things ain't going your way. But don't, don't turn the pole loose. Thank you, Jesus. Look what Paul said. Read. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Now I exhort you. I encourage you to be of good cheer. Come on. For there shall be no loss Woo. of any man's life among you. How can Paul say that? For there be no any man's loss of any man's life among you. But of the ship. But the ship. What, what are you trusting in? 
Are you trusting in the word of God? Are you trusting that God's going to take you through the storm? Now, wait a minute. Let me go back and look at some things. Did God take you through the eviction? Did God take you through the repos? Did he take you through your credit issues? Did he take you through your untimely pregnancies? Did he take you through your DWIs and, D and DUIs? Did he take you when he went to court? Is he holding your marriage together? Is, did he take you through the children issues that the children doing their own thing? Did he take if he take you through your relationships? Did he take you through the divorce? Did he bring you through the surgeries? Huh? Did he did he did he answer your financial problems? Did he keep you on the job? Paul's encouraging you. I'm encouraging you this morning. Hold on to God. Hold on to this word of God. Hold on. Because there's no guarantee that you won't have trouble in the fellowship. But God. This month's message is, but God. But God. Come on, read Look what it says. And, and Paul said, I exalt you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss, loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For Trust there, God, read. For there stood by me this night. See, this is why Paul can do that. This is why Paul can say what he's saying. What happened to him? For there stood by me this night. For there stood by me this night. The angel of God, Whew. whose I am. Wait a minute. Is there an angel speaking to you? Is God speaking to you through his word? Uh, Y'all sing songs and they're, they're songs of encouragement. But are you believing the songs that you're singing? I believe. You're praying, but are you believing the prayer that you pray? I you're reading your word, but are you believing God with the word that you're reading? I, believe. Whew, I like that. I believe. Can you say that the elder said, I believe? I believe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mm. trouble. I, it is no guarantee it's going to stay forever. When Satan attacked Jesus coming off of his fast, he told Jesus, that's all right. You got over today, but I'm going to just leave you for a season. Now, see, he used that term season because he know that winter's coming. He know that summer's coming. Some don't like it hot. Like I told him the other day when I met him at the place we were and everybody complaining about the temperature, they said, is it hot enough for you? I said, I love it. See, what they didn't understand that I'm African American. Three or four people asked me at the same time in the area that I was in, is it hot enough for you? They were just being courteous. I know. They just had something to talk about. And I tell each one of them, I love it. But I would tell them, December's coming. If you can just hold on, December's coming. December's coming. And this 100 degree day is going down to 20. And you're going to lack it and I'm going to dislike it. Because now I'm going to have to put on overcoat, thermal wear, boots and shoes and socks and battery packs and everything else. But December's coming. So that's why Satan told Jesus, I'm leaving you what? For a season. Because every season will bring his trouble. Paul's got his trouble now because this storm rises up in the winter. It's in its season. It's purpose for this storm to come. Because when, why? Because it's in its season. If they had sailed in the summer, this storm would never have been there. Because it would have been out of season. Read, Elder Reed. For there stood by me this night uh -huh. the angel of God. Uh-huh. Whose I am uh -huh. and whom I serve. Look at this here. God, Paul is letting me know I didn't just get, get this for myself. An angel of God stood by me this night and talked to me and encouraged me. And see, I, I tell you, I, I, I sound silly sometimes. I know y'all y'all don't, y'all pastors crazy. But I look at the end of things. I, I know there's aggravation and trouble in the middle. Things going on, and, and you want to throw in the towel and that. But shoot or live, there's an ending to this thing. And God's got a purpose. God's got a purpose. Come on, read. Saying, uh huh. 
Fear not. Fear not. Paul, uh -huh. thou must be brought before Caesar. This is what the angel then told Paul while he stood by him, saying, Fear not, Paul. Uh -huh. Thou must be brought thou before must Caesar. Thou must be brought before Caesar in Rome. Uh -huh. And lo. And lo. God has given thee woo. all them that mm. sail with thee. Come on now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Paul, you got to be brought before Caesar to get your head cut off. But look at the, look what he said. But I've given you, Paul, not all the ship them. captain, all them. not the centurion, all them. not the ship owner, all them. but I've given you, Paul, all them, all them that sails with you. Sometimes when you fly, you don't realize that the plane stayed up because you did. All, all 200, 300, 400 people on that plane arrived safely to their destination because you were on that plane. You. you went on ships with thousands and thousands of people. And then the only reason that ship came to safety, because you were on that ship and trusted Amen. God. You, you prayed Lord. and you, you belonged to God. You don't know who else on that ship is saved. You don't know who on that plane is saved. Somebody might have got on that plane as they were getting on and cursed the plane. But because you were on that plane, yes, Lord. God kept it. I, I, I thank God the way God do us on the plane, Brother Ron. That he put a wall there that we can't see what's coming. Only one that can see what's coming is the pilot. We sitting in the back drinking pop and sodas and, you know, letting our hair down and whatever else they want to bring us that's brown in the bottle and what have We enjoying ourselves. We don't know what's coming. They put a wall there. And you only thing you know that you got on the plane in Baltimore, D.C. somewhere, and now they, they tell you, hey, we're in L.A. And you go, do what? Yeah, you don't even know how you got there. But God. But God. Oh, I thank God for Jesus. Read. Look, the angel stood by me tonight. Uh -huh. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, who I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given you, Paul, all them that sails with thee. God has given every last one of you to me. Amen. Amen. He told me, he said, I got a whole flock waiting on you. I was out cutting grass yesterday evening, last night almost, and a flock went over. And, and I do crazy because I've never forgot that word. When the flock goes to the east, the, the, east, the geese this time of year flies over. Me. And I just raised my hand to God because, God, I don't know when the, who the flock belong or where it's going, I just thank God for the flock. All different. Sometimes I try to count them all. Can't count them because God said don't. God said don't. What did he tell David? He said don't count them. Don't count them. If I've given it to you, don't count them. See, you come in looking for the count. God said don't count. Because the, the man of God told us, Elder, didn't he say? He said God's got, God's got abundance of people to come in that door. And he said now, they're not going to be the kind of people that you're used to receiving. He said, but you're going to have to be a type of people to receive them. Amen. Huh? They're not going to look like you. They're not going to smell like you. Uh -huh. They're not going to act like you. But you got to receive them. Right. And God is getting the house ready for what's coming through the door. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, read. Verse 25. Uh -huh. Wherefore, sirs. Wherefore, sirs. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. I Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just said that. I believe God. Did y'all say? I believe, God. I believe God. Come on now, look. Read it again. I Wherefore, believe. sir, uh -huh. be of good cheer. Uh -huh. For I believe God. For I believe God. That it shall be even as it was told even me. Even as it was told me that there are no souls with lost. That Paul, that God has given all them that sails with thee to you. They're in your hands. They're not in the ship captain's hands no more. They're not in the centurion officer's hand no more. They're not even in the ship owner's hands no more. Paul, they're in your hands. Mm. Because what? Because God said, I have given them to I you. Believe. God changed ownership. Did you notice that? I because, see, the ship owner is only the owner because he owns the ship. But guess what's going to happen to the ship? So, so the ship owner don't own the ship no more when the ship is all broke up. Mm -hmm. The centurion officer got a hundred soldiers under him. But when, when we got to swim, that means we got to take this armor off. We got to get rid of these, these, these shackles of, of shoes and boots and things. We can't swim in this stuff. In other words, we all going to have to strip down before it's over with. 
and allow God to be God. Thank you, Jesus. When we get to show up, elder and men, we all going to look alike. Uh-huh. We all, we, hey, hey, look, you ain't going to look like a prisoner. You ain't going to look like the ship captain. You ain't going to look like the ship owner. You, you ain't going to look like a prisoner. You ain't going to look like a soldier. We all going to look alike when we get to shore. Woo, God knows. Because we're fellowships. Trouble in the fellowship. Come on, read. How be it? How be it? We must be cast upon a certain island. Uh-huh. But when the fourteenth night Whew. would come, the fourteenth night, tossed and turned. Come on, read. as we were driven up and down in a draft. Look at this here. For fourteen nights, this storm never stopped. For if you're not big, that storm had to be brother Ron. Only God can raise a storm that big. He'll he'll come in here and raise a storm and let it run, let it run its course. Granddaddy, Whew, a granddaddy storm. Come on now. Rock with Read, look what it says. But when the 14th night. When the 14th night was come, uh -huh. as we were driven up and down in uh -huh. the drill, about midnight. About midnight. The shipmen uh -huh. deemed that they drew near to some country. Come on, read. And sounded. Uh -huh. And found it 20 fathoms. Yes, all right, read. And when they had gone a little further, uh -huh. they sounded again. Uh -huh. And found it fifteen fathoms. Uh huh. Read. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern. Uh -huh. Read. And wished for the day. Uh huh. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, look at that. That's, uh, now look here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That means that ship company is giving them a leave. Did it say the shipmen? Hey, wait, wait a minute. What, what about the centurion and his hundred men? What about the prisoners? The what about the passengers? The shipmen's is getting ready. Are, are you the shipmen? The shipmen's getting ready to leave. But the fleet is ship. We, 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 don't, we don't care what, what happens to y'all. We're going to put down the little boat and get out of this thing. Bye-bye. Read, brother. Look what it says. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship. As the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship. When they had let down the boat into the sea. Uh-huh. Under color, as though they would have cast anchors uh -huh. out of the four, Free. Uh, four ship. Yep. Paul said to the centurion. Paul said to the centurion. To the soldiers. Uh huh. Except these abide in the ship, uh -huh. ye cannot be saved. Except you abide in the ship. <sighs> mm. But there's trouble in the ship. But you got to abide in the ship. If you get outside the ship, he said, I can't guarantee this, the life, your life. Because the angel has promised me that all these that stay in the ship will be saved. Oh, it's safety. Nowhere else but in the ship. Whew, brother. Whew, I thank God for you. There's safety nowhere but in the ship. But God. Come on, read. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat uh -huh. and let her fall off. Let the little boat fall away. Go ahead, read. And while the day sometimes, was coming. Do you notice sometimes you got to cut off little things? Yeah, cut them off. Yeah, now, 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 let me help you out here. The little things is your thoughts. Sometimes you got to cut the thought off. You know, because the thought would tell you. See, the, see, they would never had a mind to get out of the ship if the, if the thought hadn't come to them. The, let's get the little bit. If, the, if you can't be saved in the big ship, what makes you think you're going to survive in the lifeboat? The lifeboat is only when the big ship go down. Now the big ship is still there. You want to get out of the big ship. <sighs> Sometimes you just got to close your ears to something. You, you, yeah, I, I, I like this because there's a scripture that says, when your heart condemns you, I'm greater. When your mind condemn you, see, it's not that things ain't going to talk to you. Your, your mind going to talk to you sometime, and your heart's going to talk to you sometime. But the scripture says, but God is greater than your heart. He's greater than your mind. You might not can see the end of the story, but God said, ride it out. Come on, read. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat uh -huh. and let her fall off. Let her off. fall off. 
And while the day was coming on, uh -huh. Paul besought them uh, all yes. to take meat, uh -huh. saying, This day is the 14th day that ye have tarried. They've been in this dawn for a while. Mm -hmm. God, they've been and have not seen sun nor moon or stars for 14 days. You might have been in a, in a pearl for a while. You might have been going through something for a while. But Paul says now, after 14 days, read. After 14 days. Oh, you took me back. Uh-huh. No, no, I'm sorry. Right where you were. And while the day was coming on, uh -huh. Paul besought them all to take meat. Uh-huh. Saying, this day is the 14th day that ye have tarried uh -huh. and continue Whew. fasting, having taken nothing. You, who can eat when the storm is like that? You can, be in the, you can be in the cruise ship. If the cruise ship is rocking back and forth and everybody, you're not taking nothing in because everything taken in is. Right. Right. <sighs> you have to your head. I tell you one thing. It's got to be a mess on that ship. It's got to be a mess on that ship. After 14 days of seasickness, remember the soldiers don't live on ships. The prisoners don't live on ships. Ship company sometimes gets sick on a ship. But, but, that, but you got to remember the centurion means he's got 100 soldiers under him. We don't know how many prisoners are there. But there are prisoners there. But he said after 14 days they've been fasting and haven't eaten. Read, brother. Wherefore, I pray you uh -huh. to take some meat. Uh -huh. For this is for your health. This is for your health. Read. But for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. Come on, wait a minute. He went that, he went that minute. He said, not even a hair. Whew. Not even a hair will fall from your head. See, but you got to trust God not to allow a hair to fall from your head. You got to believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Bye-bye, trouble. Bye-bye. Even if trouble don't leave, bye, I'm trusting God. Woo! Look what it says. Come on, man. And where was that verse at? That was 34. Go ahead, read. And, and wherefore I pray you to take some meat, uh -huh. for this is for your health. Woo! For there should not an, an hair fall from the head of any of you. Any of you. He, now he done said 276 men is not going to lose a hair. Mm. How can you say that except God done talk to you? How can you say that and believe it except that, ain't, that God done come down and spoke to you mouth to mouth and said, Paul, there's no, not even a hair. Woo! Can I tell you this morning, not even a hair. Woo! Gonna fall from your head. Not even a hair. Woo! Gonna fall from your head. Stay in the ship. Learn to pray. Learn to read your Bible. Learn to run, won't believe this word of God. Not even a hair. Woo! God knows you. I mean, you got to be, you got to have some serious trust in God. Woo! Not even a hair. If God took you through that untimely pregnancy and brought you out, if God took you through the anesthesia with the surgeries and brought you out, if God took you through the DWIs and the DUIs and brought you out, if God took you to court and brought you out, if God took you through the repos and the, ex and the, and the evictions and brought you out, if God took you through the surgeries and brought you out, when you going to trust in God? When you going to say, God, I believe. I believe. I believe. God took you through the divorce. Now look how good you look. I, whoo, whoo, when they walk dirt on you, when they walk dirt on you and say, you ain't going to never be nothing. Huh? You ain't going to never be nothing. Look at you now. Woo! Look at you now. God might have to send you back to help them. What you going to do, Richard? Are you going to help them? Huh? Huh? What you going to do when God send you back to the one that told you? You'll never be nothing. He didn't say go back and top with him. He said you have to be a help to him. See, because when this ship got ready to break up, what did they do? They tied help to the ship. Ooh. You might have to be, you might have to feed them one day. Might have to send them a, a happy meal. You don't know. Might have to do like he told me one day. 
What you going to do when they come? Are you going to pray for them? Huh? What you going to do? You going to be upset with them and not do what God called you to do? Are you going to tell them how to get saved or are you going to stay mad with them? Huh? What you going to do when trouble comes? Because huh? sometimes God will do just like he did Moses. He'll send you back to Egypt. Woo. To the very ones that cuss you to your face. To the very ones that lied on you and said, no, you are li- now you ain't all of that in a bag of chips. Huh? What you going to do, Richard? To the one that got you pregnant and walked away from you, huh? What you gonna do? Never sent you no, never sent you no, no child support. You had to support it all your life, huh? Then they come back and look at you and smile in your face now, like, hey, you know, you look pretty good. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. And it ain't because of you, cause you never done a. You never done nothing to be a help. But God, but God saw me through it. When the kids were hungry, God brought me through it. When they didn't know where they're going to lay their head down, God brought me through it. When they didn't know where they're going to eat their next meal going to come from, God brought me through it. But God, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in you. All God's trying to do is grow you stronger. All God's trying to do is build you up in him. That's all it is. It came to make you strong. It came to build you up. Huh? He took that pot of rice. All you had was a pot of rice. Fed all 12 of them children and had something left over. Huh? He took two fish and five loaves and fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children, and still had something left over. But God, come on now. But God. Woo. Took a little boy at lunch and fed a whole concert of people. Woo. And then he took up the leftovers. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. When you going to trust God? When you going to believe God? I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Look at that little person we were talking about. Yes. Look at that little person. Five bedrooms. Three, three bathrooms. Look at God. Promote them. Relocate them. Took them to another level. Oh, I know they went through some unhappy things getting there. I knew it was some unpleasant things that didn't didn't go their way. But look at where they are now. Look at where they are now. Got their own, got their own place. Huh? Look at there now. Got your own place over there. Look at God now. Got your own place there. Thank you, Jesus. Move you from where you were and painted in and main place. Look where you're at now. Look at that. Gave you a new house. Brand new house. And uh, that thing gave you a new house. He put it on a hill so everybody could see it. Thank you, Jesus. Look at God. Look at the process that God took us through. You didn't know where your next meal was coming from. Look at God. Look at God. God sent you people with food. He sent you money. He sent you everything that you needed. Oh, he didn't give it to you all at one time. He told you, take this manna daily. Just daily. Don't take enough for two or three days. Just take enough for today. Huh? Let the mar take care of itself. Mm-hmm. He said, I'll give you manna. Manna. Thank you. Read, brother. Close me out now. Come on. Verse 35. Uh-huh. And when he had thus spoken. Go ahead, Paul. He took bread. He took the bread. Gave thanks to God. I, I can see I can see Paul now doing like Jesus, taking the bread and breaking it. Uh huh. He gave thanks to God. Gave thanks to God. In the presence of them all. In the presence of 275 men. Now Paul's the ship captain. He's the captain of your soul, not the ship, because the ship's given to leave. 275 men now looking at Paul. Mm. You the prisoner. You prisoner. But see, what you fail to realize, he had favor. When you read the beginning of this, they landed somewhere, and the centurion allowed Paul, a prisoner, to go to be with his friends, huh? And to refresh himself. When you got favor, Hallelujah. When you got favor, God knows favor ain't fear. Favor ain't fear, God. But I believe God. I believe. I believe God. Read, brother. Look what he says. And Paul took the bread and broke it. And gave thanks to God gave in, thanks to in God. presence of in them the all. In the presence of them all. And when he had broke it, he, broken had broken it, it. he began to eat. Whew. Lord, have mercy. Then were they all. 
a good cheer. Come on now. All 275 other passengers was cheerful. Good cheer. And, the, and they also took some meat. They also took some meat. Uh-huh. Read. And when we and we were in all uh -huh. in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. See, y'all already knew that. End of the story coming. Read. And when they had eaten enough. Woo-wee. They when they had did what? When they had eaten enough. When they had, mm, had a party on the ship in the midst of a storm. Had a party on the ship. Does, you, you notice they're not worrying about the storm no more? Huh? They all cheerful. It didn't say the storm had gone away. In fact, the storm hadn't gone away because it ain't broke up the ship yet. Storm is still there. But you got, you're cheerful from what? From the word of God. Mm, Paul you. broke the bread, which is the word of God. Gave it to him. And you that can swim, swim. swim. When the ship gets broken up, take the boards and the pieces of the Hold ship. On. It didn't say the storm's gone away. Help is on the but way. now hope has been given to him. Where? Through the word of God. I came this morning to bring you hope. To let you know that Help. trouble in the fellowship is not the end of your story. Yes. Go to the end to see what the end will be. God's got an ending in every story. Thank you, Jesus. Read, brother. And <clears throat> when they had eaten enough. When they had eaten enough. They lightened. That sounds like every man was full. <sighs> when they had eaten enough. Read. They lightened the ship. They lightened the ship. And cast out the wheat. Look at this here. Unto the sea. Still throwing stuff overboard. See, it, even once you start to feel better, there's some things you got to get rid of. There's some things you still got to throw overboard. See, because, see, the, sh the, the wheat was where they're going to make money on. But you got to cast it over. You got to put all your trust in God. See, they've already thrown over the tackle. They've already thrown over the ankles. But now, now we didn't know they still had the, ship with the, had the wheat in the ship. Because, see, we're going to sell that when we get to where we're going and make some money off of it. The ship, see, the one thing about the ship captain and the ship owner, we're going to make our money on the wheat. Y'all throw everything else away, but our money's in the wheat. And look what it says. And we were in all in the ship, 200 and 200, three score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. Read. And when it was day. And when it was day. They knew not the land. Wait a minute. They did this in the middle of the night. It's like the Boston Tea Party. In the middle of the night. They, see, see, now let me tell you why. Some things you got to get rid of out of your mind in the middle of the night. Because do you know in the middle of the night is when things start to lay on your mind. Things will come to you in the middle. You can have a sickness all day long, but look like that thing gets worse at night. When you lay down at night, that, it had never increased. It just seemed like it done got worse. And, and that thing will lay on you and whisper in your ear and whatever in the middle of the night. <sighs> Won't let you sleep. See, you got to throw it away when it comes to read. Read 39, read. And when it was day, uh -huh. they knew not the land. They knew not the land. But they discovered a certain creek Go ahead. with a shore uh -huh. into which they were minded, uh -huh. if it were possible, uh -huh. to thrust in the ship. Thank you, Jesus. And when they had taken up the anchors, mm -hmm. they committed themselves into the sea. See, you got to get to a point in, in life that you're going to commit yourself to God. You got to commit yourself. And see, a test will come to see whether you have committed yourself to God. Oh, it's going to come. A test going to come to see whether you have committed this thing. Read, brother. They committed themselves unto the sea uh -huh. and loosed the rudder, see, bands. Everything that they trusted in, everything you trust in, you got you to loose this thing and let God be God. Let God be God. And you got to be able to take your eyes. And just say, God, I'm trusting you. As the writer said today, I believe you. Go ahead, read. And loose the rudder bands uh -huh. and host up the main sails to the wind uh -huh. and made toward the shore. Uh -huh. And falling into a place where two sea met, uh -huh. they ran the ship ab aground. They ran the ship aground. You got to run that thing aground sometime. And let God be God. Read. And the forepart 
struck fast uh -huh. and they remained unmovable, but the hinder parts uh -huh. was broken mm. with the violence of the waves. That's all right. Break it up, God. Read. And the soldiers... Mm -hmm. Council was to kill the prisoners. Look at this here. Now the soldiers decided, let's kill the prisoners because we're going to lighten this ship. Let's, let's kill them. You should have done it earlier. Read. And the soldiers' council was to kill the prisoners uh -huh. lest any of them should swim out and escape. Uh huh. Read. But the centurion, uh -huh. willing to save Paul. Willing to save Paul. Now, see, you got to remember, there ain't but one person they're concerned about here, and that's Paul. If you, if you will save Paul, everybody else is tied to Paul. Uh-huh, Lord, the centurion, remember what Paul said, that the angel said this night, that all of them, Paul, is in your hands. Come on, read. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, uh -huh. kept them from their purpose uh -huh. and commanded that they, which, which could swim, uh -huh. should cast themselves first into the sea uh -huh. and get to land. Uh -huh. And the rest... Some of, I mean, excuse me, some on boards. Some on boards. And some on broken pieces of the ship. Uh -huh. And so it came to pass mm -hmm. that they escaped all safe to land. <sighs> now you see the rest of the story. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, Brother Ron. Go ahead, light me up there. Thank you, Jesus. God has put you in the hands of Paul. And if you would trust God, I know you can't see the way through you. Your mind is talking. But if you would trust God, God says trouble in the fellowship. But God, God will see you through. God will bring you through. God will see that all, that no souls will be lost. God will keep you safe. God will feed you bread and meat. God will see you through. But you got to trust God. It's not what you see because the scripture said faith don't come by the things we see. Huh? It, it comes by hearing by the word of God. You got to tell yourself the word of God. The things that you, the word that you hear, the, the word that you read, tell yourself. I thank God when I listen to preachers, I'm encouraged through the word. It encourages me. The word of God, whether it came through the preacher, you, or Jack, or well, a donkey. And the word of God has, still has its effect. Fellowship, trouble in the fellowship. But God, 276 souls, no souls will be lost if they stay in the ship. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all stand. We thank God for the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise team, get the last song for me that you were singing. Sing it lightly for me. Thank you, Jesus.